Hey guys, welcome to lesson two. Let's look at angles today. We've got a lot to talk about, so let me go ahead and get started. And uh, if you know these already, that's okay. Uh, all you need to do is basically just make sure you know these definitions. We'll talk about them. You can write them down as you need to. Intersecting uh, angles, uh, you know, intersecting lines look like these. They create angles. Intersecting means they cross each other. Parallel uh, means, you know, angles that are parallel to each other. They never will touch. And of course, those are going to touch. In fact, pretty soon they're going to touch. All right. Parallel lines, however, do not ever touch. Perpendicular look like this. And they cross each other in what's called a right angle. And a right angle is indicated by that. That is a 90 degree angle. And of course, if you go all the way around, it'll be 90, 180, 270, and then 360, like a circle, 360 degrees. A right angle is one that looks like this. It's made uh, by two perpendicular lines. And again, the value of that angle is 90 degrees. A straight angle is just a line. In other words, let's say you had two right angles right next to each other. Well, that would, from here to here, like that, would be one straight, they call it a straight angle. Well, if that's 90 and that's 90, then a straight angle is 180 degrees. An acute angle is one that is like this. It's less than 90 degrees. An obtuse angle is one like this that is more than 90 degrees. And these are probably all old terms for you guys, okay? A polygon, a real simple definition. Lines do not cross. They're simple figures. They're flat. They're closed. And their sides are line segments. They're not curved. They're closed up. In other words, they the vertices touch and stop at each other. The lines don't cross, and that's what a polygon is. Poly, polygon, the definition of polygon is a many-sided figure. Okay. All right. Why aren't these polygons? Why isn't that one a polygon? Because what? It crosses, right? How about this one? Same thing, right? Okay. Why is this not a polygon? It would be if these lines were attached like that, but it isn't, so it's not. Or they, they aren't, so it's not. This is not a polygon because that right side is not a line segment. It's a curve, so that's not considered a polygon. Okay. All right. A concave polygon is something, and go ahead and look in your book on page five, bottom page five. There's a picture of a concave polygon, which means that if you draw a line, uh, if you have two points and you draw a line between them, it's possible for that line to be outside the polygon, okay? And a convex means no matter where you draw two points inside that polygon, if you connect those two points with a line, it'll always be inside the polygon, okay? A regular polygon has two characteristics. Go ahead and turn the page <coughs> and look at the picture. You have an equilateral poly polygon right there means all the sides are the same. Equiangular means all the angles are the same. A regular, there's two things in common, or two things that define a regular polygon. All the angles are the same measure, and all the side lengths are the same as well. That's a regular polygon. Okay, all right? A regular triangle, look at the ones below. There's a regular triangle. All the sides and angles are the same. A regular quadrilateral, that's a four-sided figure, which is a square. A regular pentagon, you can see all those sides are the same length and all the angles. And a regular hexagon, same thing. So those are all regular polygons, all right? Let's talk about triangles very quickly. Let's define all these. You can put your book away if you want to. A right triangle, we talked about that already. It is a triangle. Well, no, we talked about an angle. That's a horrible sign. Don't even draw a triangle like that. A right triangle has a right angle in it, which is 90 degrees, okay? An acute triangle looks like this, where... All three of those angles, this one, this one, and this one, we'll just call them different. They're all less than 90 degrees. An obtuse triangle looks more like this, kind of, you know, that top angle is going to be right here. It's going to be more than 90 degrees. An equiangular triangle, no doubt you've guessed, has all three of these angles are the same measure. And sometimes they'll show you a, uh, a picture of a triangle, and it'll have a little curve like that inside the angle. 
if one matches another, that's, it's, that's the, you know, the writer's way of telling you that these two angles are the same measure. Okay? The other way to tell uh, things are the same measure in a triangle, or a polygon of any kind, is that you can go like this. Look, if you go, ooh, look, there's a tick mark. <clears throat> they call them on each side. If they match, then that means those sides are the same length. Okay, that's a regular triangle. An isosceles triangle looks like this. And that means that two of the sides, at least, are the same uh, length, which means this angle over here across from that side and this angle here across from that side are also going to be the same as well. Equilateral triangle is one of these where all the sides are the same length. A scalene triangle is one of those weird triangles like this or something, you know, that uh, they'll indicate it's a scalene triangle, which means none of the sides or angles is the same as another. So, there's an angle, they'll say, okay, there's, it's two here, and then, oh, there's three there, to show that one, two, three, they're all different, okay? They'll do this sometimes, see, they'll go, oh, this here, and then there, and then whoop, 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 like that. So you see that, oh yeah, they don't have the same number of tick marks. None of those sides, uh, they're not the same at all as each other, okay? So let's look at this. One last thing we need to talk about triangle is the measure of the angles, the total measure of angles inside a triangle is 180 degrees, okay? We'll talk at a later time why this is true, but <clears throat> you need to memorize that. Make sure you know the number of angles, I mean the measurement of the angles inside our triangle, all three angles, will add up to 180 degrees, okay? Let's use that to find out what the value of x is, okay? Well, this is 130, and this is 30. That's the total of 160. So we know that the entire triangle is 180 degrees, so that'll be 20 degrees. So x is 20 degrees, all right? Another one. Find x and y. The answer is, there they are, right there. Okay, we found them. Okay, let's go to the next one. I'm just kidding. Okay, we need to do more than find them. Okay, they're telling us that uh, this, with this tick mark here and this tick mark here, that tells us that this side length is equal to that side length. Okay, uh, an angle opening up like this, like look at the bottom here. This angle near the base of my hand, the, the, the wider this angle gets, that means the longer this side is across from it. So the angle across from the side determines how long the side is. So if this is a 50 degree angle, and it gives us that side length over here by how wide it opens from here to here, then that means if this side is the same length, then that means the angle across from it is exactly the same as that angle. So both of those are 50, so x is going to be 50 degrees. And now that we know we have 50 degrees here and 50 degrees there, that's 100 degrees total, so what does the measure of angle y have to be? 80, right? Because the whole thing adds up to 180 degrees. So there you go. Okay, let's try this one. All right, <clears throat> well, this one, you have a side length of 8. Now again, the side length is created by this angle right there. And this side length is created by the angle that's across from it. In other words, how wide does it open? That's what makes the side length between this finger and that finger. Okay. So knowing that, if those two sides are 8, that means the angles across from each other are equal as well, are congruent, I guess as they say. Okay. So we have 180 degrees total in a triangle, right? So we've taken care of this angle here. All right, that's 110 degrees. That's going to be 70 degrees left. Okay, well, if both of those are the same, then we're going to have to just chop 70 in two to find out each one of those angles. And the answer is 35 degrees for both of those. That would be the measure. Okay. All right, last section here. We're talking about quadrilaterals. A quadrilateral is simply a four sided figure. That's it. Okay, you should be aware of what these are named, the names for these. So I would definitely. There is a group of these pictures. You can look at this later, but it's on page eight. But don't look now. Um, this is called a parallelogram. Parallelogram. Okay. And what that means is, is that that's a quadrilateral where the opposite sides are parallel to each other. That's what a parallelogram is. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So opposite sides are parallel to each other. And by the way, this has sides that are parallel to each other. And this has sides that are parallel to each other. 
and this has sides that are parallel to each other. This one doesn't. <coughs> it just has one set. A parallelogram has two sets. All right, this is called a trapezoid. It has one pair of sides. <coughs> Excuse me, that are parallel to each other. All right, this is a parallelogram, and it has all right angles. That is called a rectangle. Okay, this is a parallelogram because the opposite sides are parallel. And what, do we, what can we tell about all those sides other than they're parallel? They're also what? Congruent to each other, right? The little tick marks, they all have the same tick mark, so that means all the side lengths are exactly the same. So a rhombus is a parallelogram that has all four sides congruent to each other. They're the same size. Okay, this is obviously a square. A square is a parallelogram. The opposite sides are parallel. It's also a rectangle, which means it has all right angles. And it also has uh, all four sides equal to each other. So a square actually is a parallelogram. A square is also a rectangle because of the right angles. And a square is also a rhombus because the rhombus is defined as all the sides are the same length. Well, all those sides are the same length too. Um, and they're parallel, and that's their parallel. So a square is a rhombus, and a square is a rectangle. There you go. Okay. All right. Let's try, pause it, and try all three of those practice problems. And then come back when you're finished, and uh, we'll take a look at all three. Okay. So pause the video. Okay. A, we have 55 degrees and 55 degrees. That gives us 110 degrees. What's left over from 180 degrees? 70 degrees. All right, so let's look at B. We have 40 degrees here. This is, of course, this gives us a certain side. How wide that open, that angle opens, gives us that side length. How wide this angle gives us that side length. Well, if it gives us the same side length as this, that means the angle has to be the same as well. So X is going to be also 40 degrees, okay? But X is 40 and Y is 40, that gives us 80 total. So we need 180 in, in a triangle, so y is going to have to be 100 degrees. So x is 40 and y is 100 degrees. All right, well, let's look at the C. If we have 112 degrees, that means we're going to subtract that from 180 to see how many degrees we have left. And the answer is 68 degrees. If this is 10, that, again, this angle y gives us this length. Angle x gives us this length over here, okay? And since both of those are going to be the same, since they're both 10, we'll just divide the 68 by 2, which means x and y are both equal to 34. Okay. All right, that is enough for today. We will do uh, some more stuff uh, later on, and uh, you guys have a great day. See you next time.